in almost every undergraduate statistics final exam, you're going to have a problem or two on confidence intervals and sample sizes. I say you can be confident that these types of questions will show up. With confidence interval type problems, you generally have three types. A sample size greater than 30 would be a Z. A sample size less than 30 would be a T. And, and note on these also uh, whether or not you know your population standard deviation uh, is, is often discussed here also. So sample size greater than 30, less than 30, or you may be asked to determine the confidence interval for a proportion. Understand the types of questions, understand what you need, and understand how to use technology to do these because technology makes these very easy. I've got a video or a number of videos on my site related to confidence intervals and sample sizes. With sample size problems, you should understand the formulas and use technology when possible. You generally would be given a confidence level, sigma, and error values and asked to calculate the si sample size needed. Or you could be given a confidence level, a proportion, and an error uh, and asked to uh, calculate the sample size needed. And, and remember, with these type questions, when they use the word within three books or within two or within five percent or within the era is usually preceded often preceded by the word within remember on the proportion sample size problems if they do not give you p you use a p of 0.5 if it is unknown hypothesis testing understand when to use z T and proportions. Hypothesis testing is not bad. You have to understand the claim. Understand if it is the null or the alternative hypothesis. And be able to understand and note what your finding is as it relates to your claim. Remember that your claim can be either the null or the alternative. And also remember that your null hypothesis always contains equality. Your null hypothesis will either be the mean is equal to, uh, the proportion is equal to, or the mean is less than or equal to, or the mean is greater than or equal to, or the proportion is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. And your alternative always contains inequality. Your alternative will always be either not equal to, less than or greater than. Here's a z-type question. Test the following claim about the population mean. Mu at the significance level noted giving this use, used given the sample statistics. Assume the population is normally distributed. Our claim is that the mean is greater than 900. Our level of significance is 4.04 or 4%. Our, our population standard deviation is 100.75. Sampling found X bar 326.35. So that's my sample mean. And I had a 175 data points. Here's another thing that throws students on these. Say they gave me the 175 data points. I would have to go find the sample average, the X bar, but they've given me the population standard deviation. All I need to find is the mean of the sample data with these Z type questions where I have more than 30 in the sample size. For this one, I have much video help available. I've got a file that I have shared related to hypothesis testing. And of course, this would be a Z type test. The uh, sample size is greater than 30. It's 175. I put in my sample mean, my population standard deviation. Note this is the population standard deviation. My alpha and the hypothesized value. Okay, our alternative was that the mean is greater than 900. So I put that 900 here. This gives me the test statistic, 3.460 to three decimal places. Down here, I have to understand what my null hypothesis is before I pick one of these. 
If my alternative is that it's greater than 900, my null will be that it's less than or equal to. So I look down here, less than or equal to. My p-value is 0 .0003, 0 0.0003. What is my decision? To reject the null. Okay. And so by rejecting the null on this one, my claim is going to be accepted that the mean is actually greater than 900. Here is a t-test type situation. Why? Because the sample size is less than 30. <clears throat> I've got a claim that the mean is greater than 152. So my alternative would be that it's greater than 152. My null is the complement is that it's less than or equal to 152. They've given me an app, uh, uh, alpha of 0 0.02. My sample statistics, note with a T, they give me the mean, X bar, and the sample standard deviation, okay? Now, let's say they gave me 20 data points and all they gave me was that the mean, the claim is the mean is greater than 152 and the alpha is 0 0.02. Well, if they just gave me the 20 data points on the T, I would have to go find the mean and the standard deviation of the 20 data points. And of course, I count the data. There's 20. I know N is equal to 20. Note the difference between the T and the Z. If they give me data, all right, with the T from the sample, I get both the mean and the standard deviation. However, on the previous Z example, I only got the mean because they gave me the population standard deviation. All right, so on this one, I would use the hypothesis testing. I would push the tab down here that says T, where my sigma is unknown and the sample size is less than 30. I put in the information, paying attention to where I'm putting it in. It gives me the test statistic. It gives me the p-value, but since my alternative hypothesis is that it's greater than 152, my null would be that it is less than or equal to. So I look at the correct line. All of these can be different. This is set up so that it would handle three different type tests. So we would fail to reject. And remember what I'm actually doing. I'm comparing this p-value to this alpha. If p is greater, maybe later, but I'm not going to reject it now, so I fail to reject. P is greater, maybe later, but not now. I don't reject. P is less, please reject. All right, so there's a T situation. Here's a situation where I have a proportion hypothesis test. The mayor claims that 72% of the citizens approve of his new road. In a random sample of 298 citizens, 229 approved of the new road. At an alpha of 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to support the mayor's claim? First, he said more than 72, so he says it's greater than 0.72, so that's the alternative. The null would be less than or equal to 0.72. Note we use a P here because we're talking proportions. I just go to the proportion tab on my uh, hypothesis testing file. I put in the 298. The 229 is the number of successes. Remember, you might have to calculate the number of successes if they said 77% of the 298. I would simply type in here equals 0 0.77 times 298 to get that value or do it on a calculator before and plug it in. All right, you do not mess with the yellow cells. Here's my alpha, my hypothesized value. Remember, that was greater than 0.72, so I put in 0.72 here. It gives me the critical of value to uh, four decimal places, so if I rounded it to two, it would be 1.86. Now. Remember what my hypothesis was, all right? The null was that it is less than or equal to 0.72. So find less than or equal to down here. Uh-oh. And uh, look out to the right. We reject the null. Here's my p-value. Here's my test statistic. We reject the null. And by rejecting the null, 
we are accepting the claim in this case, or we're saying there are enough evidence to accept the claim. So, by rejecting the null, we are supporting the mayor's claim that, that it's greater than 72%. Now, in a short amount of time, I think I've covered most of the topics that you will see on your undergraduate statistics class, no matter where you are. There might be some little... Uh, idiosyncrasy somewhere in there that your own professor threw in there that they might want to test you on, but I have covered most of the things that are generally asked on a typical final exam. Now, how they ask them and what to use, you've got to get good at, at figuring that out, and that takes practice and practice, and hopefully you have done that throughout your term. I wish you all the best of luck in your exams, and uh, hopefully you will nail it, nail it to the wall. So take care.